Hi friends, welcome to our weekly garden stroll, which are rapidly winding down because we are running out of things to look at that are different every week. Um, I would think we've probably got maybe two or three more of these left as a regular schedule. Um, I've got some ideas of how we're going to, what we're gonna do, because I like this idea of having something kind of a little bit more casual and conversational um, on Sunday mornings. So I have some ideas of what that uh, is gonna be once we wrap these up for the year. And we will still do a few garden strolls in winter. It's just that things will not be changing. There will be times when the garden is looking much nicer than others. But I wanted to open this up today with the purple bell vine, Rhodochiton at atrosanguinium, which I am required to say because it's just fun to say that botanical name, still looking just outstanding over here. I mean, I really need to start thinking about pulling these pots apart uh, because we are going to get cold. I knew it would come and it is going to come at the end of next week. So it's going to get unpleasant to be outside doing these things, but I just couldn't have asked for anything more. This one grown from seed. Uh, if you've followed along for ages and you know the story of this plant, I've had very mixed results growing this plant from seed in this past year. I did grow it from seed and thank goodness because the plants that I ordered were terrible. Um, and it worked out great. So uh, I guess I'm sure we'll do a video on that when I do that. But I started them in February early. I sowed probably 10 seeds to about a four inch pot. And then I kept it on a heat mat the entire time they were growing. I never took it off the heat mat because they're, they've, they're from Mexico. They want heat. So I, um, once they were big enough, I separated them into their individual pots, uh, just kept growing them under lights. And at no point did I ever take them off the heat. Maybe that's the secret, maybe it's not. I wanna start with um, a postcard and a couple just quick announcement-y things. Uh, this postcard, Beauty Here, and Darren, I hope you enjoy this view from the Children's Garden at Coastal Maine Botanical Gardens. Uh, definitely inspirational. Enjoy this stamp too from Plymouth County in Massachusetts. And apologies to you because I, I once sent you a weird DM because I thought I was messaging my daughter. That must have been creepy. You know what? It happens more often than you would believe. Here's the uh, stamp. Uh, Coastal Maine Botanical Gardens. I went there um, two years ago now or last year and I would like to go back. Love it. I particularly like it because it's a very similar zo uh, zone to what I grow in, so it's very applicable to um, to my garden. And not that it's not fun to see gardens that aren't from different zones. It's just I know that I can usually take something out of that garden and put it directly into my garden. Um, oh, and that is from Melissa. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, quick announcement before we stroll around. Um, uh, I don't know, a month ago or so, at some point I created channel memberships. You can join the channel. There's always a link in the description uh, and you can look at the different levels. But there's, I mean, by all means, if you don't wanna do that, that's fine. Subscribing to the channel is always completely free. You just hit the little subscribe button below the video. If you have subscribed in the past, check that you're still there. YouTube did another big thing where they took a lot of people who were subscribed to channels. Um, out so you might want to double check so subscribing always free membership is an additional thing and uh, next Saturday 9 30 a.m. Central Time we're gonna have a members only live session so if you are a member um, join in for that uh, and you should be getting messages um, or seeing some special community items about that too we're gonna do some lives for everybody soon I just want to do a special one for the members to show everybody how much I appreciate them and uh, but don't worry we'll be doing lives especially as we get into winter I like doing lives I, I think they're really fun uh, it's just hard to find time to do those uh, in summer winter's a good time to catch up on all of these things it is only three o'clock in the afternoon as I film this and you would think it was already five because it's probably very dark in this video um, a couple of things one a lot of questions about Dorothy last week. Uh, Dorothy, our seven-year-old Newfoundland, she's here, she's great. You guys know she just has never been one to really follow me around the garden. And I don't make my animals do anything for videos. So uh, if she doesn't want to come around, she doesn't have to. She has a little something concerning that has popped up on her nose today. So I've already written to the vet and just everyone cross your fingers that that is a nothing burger. 
We already just are coming off a week where one of the cats was sick and he's totally miraculously fine. And I'm not even mad at, about, at him about the trip to the emergency vet and the trip to the other vet and all kinds of other things and days of worrying about him because he's totally fine. We don't know what happened, but cats do this sometimes. All I care about is that he's good, so he's great. I would love to have very healthy animals here for a stretch for a bit. Um, so Dorothy's great. She just isn't in the videos. Uh, this little one, uh, Magnus, although now we're kind of calling him Darwin, uh, is laying right at my feet here and is probably just, just likes to be with me. I love it. I'm good with that. Um, I hope that ha keeps happening. Let's take a, like, take a stroll around and see what we got. Um, actually, what I want to start with is something you can probably see all the way from over here, which is the climbing hydrangea. Now, the one on the tree has basically already dropped its leaf, but this one is just so beautiful. Sorry, I'm kicking the tripod on you here. Just that. This one is so beautiful right now. Um, just the most gorgeous golden color. And of course we have this blue door, um, which, you know, you can't really ask for a better color combo than that. Isn't that just, mm, looks so, so, so good. Uh, and so is things like the Hackle and Chloe All Gold that's in there. I mean, it's just a beautiful, lots of beautiful gold, which is nice because we're losing a lot of things. Now, look at the hornbeams in the back there, barely starting to turn color. Now that's um, uh, Carpinus betulus. Those are European hornbeams. The uh, American hornbeams have already lost their leaves, the, although those are quite new plants, so that could be it. But I, it's quite interesting to note how those are mostly still green. Those should hold their leaves for most of the winter as, you know, like rusty colored, which is great. I'm all for, I, I'm all for that. I like that quite a bit. Um, we're gonna try to hit just some of the things that are looking good. Oh, I finally got a proper ID on this aster and I'm gonna put it on the screen. I had to write to Roy Diplick to find out what it was and he was nice enough to answer that for me um, because all summer long I've been guessing at what this is or, or fall long. Anyway, I will put that on the screen for you so you have that but it just keeps blooming and blooming and blooming. I mean, my gosh, the performance on this thing has been just outstanding. Finally, we're getting some color change on the uh, bush honeysuckle. Also, gosh, the deer, just, just here in the past couple of days, the deer have gone batty eating stuff. And I have not been keeping up on my deer spray at all. So um, that is a lot on me. But this is the Kodiak Red. Uh, and just now started to kind of get this sort of yellow color. Um, I think the Clethera seed heads are absolutely gorgeous. I'm, I'm really happy that I've some, somehow managed to find Clethera uh, because I, it was, that plant was not on my radar. We will take what might be the last look at the window box because as I said, the forecast is to get like a moderately okay week but by Friday, next Friday, it's going to get a little ugly, which is unfortunate because it's probably going to be cold. But the window box still looks great. And I have decided I just, I am not going to even go in there to clean anything out until I go in there to put the Christmas stuff in. So this year, we are literally going to go straight from summer to Christmas in this container. But... I have turned the water off to it. We have turned the water off to the hoses. Um, we can turn it back on easily, but it's just, it's on the verge of frosting. So we just turned them off for now. I didn't want to blow anything up. I do that most years. You know, other things that are still looking good. I mean, really the salvia uh, skyscraper orange, still looking good. A lot of you told me that you like that salvia and the whole skyscraper series. The Wygela Midnight Sun, looking really, really nice. The Wild Magic Basil is like the tops got nipped by frost, but there's still leaves on the bottom. I mean, it's time to obviously uh, pull those out of there. Those are toast, but we enjoy the little bit we can, right? And again, not a lot changed over here, except if you look at the end of the driveway there, You'll notice that the Heckle and Flow of Macro now is really starting to change colors quickly. I think this is 
is a huge color change actually from last week's video. And it's, uh, it's really lovely shades of gold. Interestingly, you know, like in the middle, there's a lot of green left, uh, but on the edges it's, you know, gold to brown to almost chartreuse. Here's all these beautiful seed heads. Um, I'm trying to not show you my address. Um, here, I mean, this is, it's just beautiful. And the way it moves right now in the uh, breeze is so nice. Uh, did cut down some, I didn't, Carol, who helps me in the garden, did cut down some of the things in this garden. I am preparing for the possibility of being able to get some um, uh, compost in this part of the garden. And some of that stuff was not looking, was not looking great. So I didn't, I said, I told her to cut down the stuff that was already looking bad and was not gonna hold any interest. So uh, this lilac, this just happened last night. They just, deer just came and got that lilac like crazy. It's, it, I don't know what happened, except the deer are, are running around like crazy right now. So um, here's castor bean, still, still standing up, doing its thing. We still have a few blooms on the Montrose white uh, Calamintha, but you know, barely. Um, I have peppers over there. I still need to pick. Actually, you know, I have not watered these pots for ages. Um, and considering that I've picked them over and I've not watered, I mean, the begonias that are in these hanging pots and this begonia is still, you know, half alive. I am going to, um, oh gosh, I should have taken, I should take those heucheras out of there and pop those in the ground. Um, these are going to get Christmas, Christmasified, winterified with greens and stuff. So I will clean those out when I, when I get to that. Now, most of the, um, the other ginkgo has lost basically all its leaves. This one still has a few, which is interesting. You know, ginkgos usually drop all their leaves all at once. Um, this one is not quite doing that, but it, it will probably. That's because, we, uh, so the difference, in case you were curious as to why ginkgos behave differently than other trees in that regard, is that most trees gradually scab over that cuticle where the petiole, which is the little stemmy part of a leaf, comes out. But ginkgos tend to do that all at once. So this is the scene of fall when you have a ginkgo. They're beautiful though. Uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, I mentioned how I cut out this viburnum that was in between these two. It's really a breath of fresh air. I'm really happy I did that. I think that was a, a very good call to kind of open this area up a little bit. All of the dahlias have been dug. I just have a couple more to store that were dug up that I'm storing for someone else. Uh, so I just have to put those away, but we are basically done with that project. This is the tricolor beach. Actually kind of pretty fall color on it. I mean, I don't know if that's what it's supposed to look like or not, but it's kind of pretty. And even, even here in the woods, um, basically everything has lost its leaves. This, uh, I don't know if you can see the few little red leaves that are on this one right here. And then there's another maple in the back there. Both of those are ones that we've planted uh, bare root. Um, and they're one of the kind of hybrid ones, it's kind of newer hybrid varieties that are kind of known for their color. So this is going to be the scene. Now, the one nice thing about this is we do get a tiny little view of the lake right there through here, only in winter, because when the ferns, the ostrich ferns are growing, we don't see that. But um, you have to take the good bits as they come. And one of the good bits for us in winter is we do get, it's the one time a year that we get a small little view of the lake. We used to have a view from the bedroom window, uh, but uh, here comes the dog, Darwin slash Magnus. Um, uh, anyway, um, we used to have a view, but that has changed with the construction next door. I haven't really done a lot in the gardens to, um, other than you know, digging the dahlias and then that little bit of cleanup. There's a few more things to do, but if it all ended right now, I'd be okay with where things are, with where, 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 excuse me, 
with where things are at. Um, I think, you know, like I, I am probably gonna come in here and take out these, cut down these baptizias and maybe a few other things. Probably pile a bit of extra mulch here, although I already have done some at the base of the pop star hydrangeas. Although I'm happy with these, I think they're in a really nicely protected spot. So hopefully they'll be happy overwintering there. Um, <laughs> I really can't get over how good this planter is still looking. I'm really happy I did this early because I really been enjoying it for a long time. I'm, I'm, I was happy with the timing for when I did this and this one too. And by the way, all you people who want to yell at me about the fact that I don't like mums and I say bad things about them all the time are welcome to rub it in because here's a mum that is still flowering. And it was flowering when I planted or, or just about to flower when I planted it. So yes, I was wrong. And the marigolds are just looking, just looking great. So, and even the, check out the color on the ornamental oregano. This one is Bellissimo. This is Kent Beauty and this is Bellissimo. So you can kind of see the difference in the two of them. Uh, the, the flower, are these bracts? are a little bit tighter and smaller here on Bellissimo. I mean, when I see them like this, I prefer Bellissimo, but it took a lot longer to get flowering than the Kent Beauty did. So I don't know exactly which I would pick as a fit. They're both lovely plants. Uh, so, and here we've got like a nasturtium back here flowering away. I don't know, it's the weirdest, it's the weirdest darn near here. Um, have we talked about, I don't know if we've talked about reversions. I'm probably gonna do a reel on this, but so you see here the Ascot Rainbow, um, Ascot Rainbow Euphorbia here. You see this plain green here. So there's some in this plant and then this plant, uh, here there's one in this plant. And we've got kind of half of one turning in this one and then a whole bunch of shoots in this plant behind it. And so you can see that that plant is, those are taller things. So the, the deal with uh, reversion is that this is something that variegated plants are prone to. Um, and it's very common. It's, it's not uncommon to happen. Some variegated plants are more stable than others. And the thing to know is that variegation is always um, a weaker and slower growing portion of a plant because um, they, they're able to photosynthesize less than all green foliage. So the thing to do when you see that is cut out the all green parts as soon as you see them. And that won't stop it from happening, but it will, um, it will certainly slow what is essentially eventually going to happen, which is that the whole plant will eventually turn green. But you can basically put the, uh, bring that almost to a stop or at least slow it significantly by just cutting out the green bits. So that's what I would, I need to do in here is go in here and cut out the, the stems that are all green or else what will happen is these plants will turn all green because that's a much stronger growing portion of the plant. Darwin, where are you? Oh, hi, what are you doing over there? Hi. So that's how uh, reversion works. It happens on basically all variegated plants to some extent. And some are, sometimes it's a stability thing. Sometimes it just kind of happens. So if you see that, uh, and I have lost plants to this before. I had a variegated sedum and it did not cut out the green parts that came. And very quickly, it was only a all green one. You'll note I have still not put these things uh, uh, away. So these are plants that are not hardy here. Um, zone seven, I think on both of these and the Fiona sunrise jasmine. And then the other two that are in the window box there. And, uh, I want to wait, probably that will happen in, I would just guess two weeks looking at the weather. I would like these to, I want them to, to essentially get cold and go dormant. They're, they're certainly hardy down to, let's see, zone seven plant is hardy down to what? Zero degrees. So we're not getting obviously anywhere near that. So it's better if when I put them away in the garage, which is where they're gonna go, um, if they 
have put themselves into dormancy. Otherwise, they're struggling to try to continue growing in those conditions. And obviously, there's no light in it, not any real light in there. So it's obviously not a place where a plant really wants to be. Um, I'm just noticing really beautiful color on a couple of these tough, uh, tiny Tough Stuff hydrangeas. I don't know that I've noticed that before. Here's one of them right here. Now, some of the other ones, you know, um, are quite a bit more purple, but that's really pretty color. You, we don't generally think of growing hydrangeas for their uh, fall color, but it not, this is, this is nothing to sneeze at here. Okay, a quick tour. Again, I'm trying not to be repetitive from week to week, but I do like to update you on what's been happening in the garden and things are still sort of happening more or less in the garden. We'll wrap these up soon. And uh, like I said, we're gonna do something fun instead of this. So stick around and uh, some videos coming up for this week. Let's see, we're gonna talk about um, some fun amaryllis bulb planting. We're gonna talk about uh, Christmas gift ideas. So some fun videos coming up this week that you should be on the lookout for. Uh, we're gonna do some amaryllis bulb planting, something a little fun with that. Uh, we're gonna do some holiday gift giving ideas. And really, let's be honest, when I watch holiday gift ideas or videos, I am not shopping for anyone but myself. So however you choose to shop for that, I like to sometimes send them with a note to certain people in my life who are looking for gift ideas for me. Anyway, that's coming up. Uh, if I can get my button gear, I do have some bulbs to plant still. So it'd be nice to get that done. So we might talk a little bit about that and just some more wrapping up of the garden. And I guess I'm gonna have to get rid of that beautiful bell vine soon. What a shame. All right, I hope you guys are having a great day in your garden. Thanks for stopping in for this very uh, kind of quick garden stroll. Um, lots more to come. I appreciate you guys all being here. I hope you have a great day in your garden and we'll talk soon.